All right, we are with Brian Aguilar in JPT Studios. Hey, Brian, what is your background? How'd you start? Well, I mean, I started originally with Tony and Guy in 2010. Okay. And I went to their academy, and the one in Costa Mesa had just opened up. Yeah, yeah. So I actually was reading, like, the OC Weekly magazine. Yeah. And right in the middle of it, like, new academy opening up. I'm like, that's where I'm going to go, you know? Because prior to that, I was just cutting hair in my bathroom. I started when I was 14, like, slinging haircuts. My friends, like... I don't know, for whatever reason, they trusted me with, like, cutting their hair. So, so you started basically doing a lot of your, your friends, like, so a lot of men's haircuts, short haircuts. Men's, women's, too, you oh, know. Oh, really? Like, okay. Um, just really free-handing. Yeah, yeah. And the ironic part is that I lived in San Juan Capistrano, and the closest mall was Mitchell Viejo Mall. Yeah. And they had a Tony Lang there. And I would walk by the salon, and I would see everybody cutting. And just by, like, I guess, proxy or just visual, like, visually seeing what they're doing, I was like, I think I can do that, you know? So I was always, like, pretty decent with working with my hands. You know, growing up, we'd always, like, be messing around with, like, fixing things at home or, like, you know, working. My uncle's a mechanic, so we were, like, working on cars and stuff like that. And it was nice because, like, you know, so when, you know, I would walk by, I'd be like, okay, like, that's, like, now what I know now is slide cutting. And I'm like, I'm going to try that on, like, long hair. Yeah. Or okay, scissor over comb. That looks pretty nice. You know, I'll try that with like the men's haircuts. Or even like texturizing techniques as well. Um, but yeah, then you know, I started going to school 2010. When I graduated, I started with a company, and then I was like, you know, would work with them. Um, I got training there. I did the hair, like, the haircut portion of like the training, and then their educator training. So I was an educator for them for like. I think maybe like four or five years. As a Tony guy. As a Tony guy educator. So I would be their basic academies, advanced academies. And then I would also do just kind of like more like salon mm -hmm. work as well. Um, but when I left, I just, you know, stepped away from education for a while. And then not until recently I started coming back, you yeah. know, into it. But it's cool because like I have a little bit of that background. But now I'm able to really bring in what I love to do is be more visual with my hair cutting. And like, kind of like bringing back the like old cutting methods that I learned in my bathroom, really, just by trial and error. So almost like Tony and Guy texture with freehanding. Yeah, like having that foundation, but yeah. like just really like reading the hair, you know, yeah, okay. like navigating, navigating the hair a little bit more, and like not just like cutting like a machine. So I think sometimes we get in the habit, like, all right, we're gonna do this sectioning, but it's like. Or do you remember why you're doing it? Or like if that doesn't feel right, like don't follow through with do it. Do you use some of the uh, old school Tony and Guy sectioning patterns? Mm, not curious. inherently. I mean, I think just like foundational like stuff. Okay. You know, like working through the nape, working through like the occipital, the crown, uh, front to back, back to front. So not necessarily like Tony and Guy. This is like a classic haircut. But kind of a blend I mean, I feel like every brand kind of does something similar, like yeah. a variation of the same thing. Yeah. So like one could be like, oh, that's an evaded technique, or that's a you know Paul Mitchell technique, or that's Tony and Guy. But at the end of the day, like I wouldn't necessarily say like yeah, it's a Tony and Guy technique. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I think it's good to have a foundation. You know, whether it's any company, like having a terminology, methodology, something you could build off of is really important. You know. So, and then we got, we're talking earlier. So what is your favorite haircut? Man, I think historically it's really been like a bob, like a bob variation. Like a very classic bob. Classic okay. bob, um, layered bob, textured bob, you know, like a French bob, bob with fringe, right? Like they're all so beautiful and elegant and they're so much fun and they are probably one of the most difficult haircuts to like perfect, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, it's like one thing could go off, like your head could be tilting one way or, you know, say like... I don't know, like the layer you could go too short or not enough layering. So you really have to be on your game whenever like whenever one walks through this lawn, I'm always like, okay, like I gotta put my big boy pants on and like figure this out, you know. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta get it right. Yeah. Alright, so where do you see hair trends going in the next say for fall winter? I I don't know like if like over like across the map where I see hair trends going, but I really love like the Japanese style of just being inspired coming back from Japan in April. Seen a lot of like fun, cute fringes, a little bit softer. Seen some like double cuts, um, a little bit more classic, and I guess more in the styling than anything. Okay. You know, everything's a little bit more softer, um, and just a lot of texture, really. You know, so 
I wouldn't say necessarily like, oh, like it's gonna be a hair trend, but that's yeah. where I want to push like my hair. I'm not sure if anybody else does this, but like I dream about hair, you know? I dream <laughs> about like haircuts and concepts and ideas, and I'm like, okay, I wake up the next morning, I'm like, that's how I'm gonna do it. Like, I'm gonna try that out, see how that works out. So, okay. it's kind of like, I dream about certain looks, and maybe they don't always like come to fruition, but sometimes they like, I, I'm like, okay, I like this one, I'm keep that one in my back pocket. All right, final question. <laughs> what is some advice you can give to new hairdressers? Just be open and curious, you know, always learn. Um, don't sell yourself short, you know, you, you know a lot, but everybody else knows, you know, everybody else knows something. There's always like, you know, some mastery in every person. Yeah. So being able to kind of just like listen and be like, hey, like, what, what do you like? You know, what is that? You know. And I mean, again, just be open, just be receptive and be willing to share too, because when you share, you end up learning a lot as well. Sounds great. Thanks, man. Yeah. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right.